Good morning and welcome to today's uh, Falling, are you falling for me? A DIY marathon. My name is Tracy Campbell here at My Sweet Home Living. I'm kicking off today and excited that Cheryl and Sheila have invited me to join them in their marathon event today. You can find all of the creators all in one place. There is an event group that I have linked for you in the video description where you can watch all of today's creators. There's, uh, I think maybe 19, if I'm not mistaken, 19 creators that you can find and watch today and it's all fall related so if you're in the fall crafting and decorating mood then you'll want to check it out today so hop on in here i have a fun project for us today we are repurposing a vintage jar into something that you can use for your home decorating this fall and as you come on in let me know that you are here if this is your first time also let me know let me know where you're tuning in from I always like to see where everyone is watching from. I see Sandra and Brenda, Vicki and Amy. Thank you all for hopping on. Let me know that you are here. And if you're watching on the replay, let me know that too. <laughs> all right, after me today is Miss Sheila from Sweeties Creations. If you click on the video or on the event group link that's in my video description, you'll be able to watch her and the rest of the creators in today's event all in one place. So thank you. Good morning, Miss Joey Bailey. There's Miss Sheila in the comments. Uh, she is coming up after me, so I know you'll want to check her out and all of the other creators that are in today's event. Good morning, Miss Brenda from Texas. Good morning, Babette from Ohio. Welcome on in. You're a newbie, she says. Glad to have you, glad to have you. My name is Tracy Campbell. My pa uh, page is My Sweet Home Living. If you're new to me, I'd appreciate it if you would tap on the screen and then tap those three dots in the top right corner where you can uh, follow and turn on your notifications. Uh, if you like vintage and rustic style uh, projects and uh, decorating, then this will be the place you wanna be. So let's hop on into it. I am gonna be repurposing a vintage jar today. How many of you have jars that you have trouble throwing away, but maybe you just don't know what to do with them? You could use the same thing with oh, empty candle jars. Um, pickle jars, yes. <laughs> empty pickle jars, like the giant pickle jars, or uh, spaghetti sauce jars. You all have seen me repurpose some spaghetti sauce jars and things like that for some different things. Well, today we're going a little bit oversized. We're using a vintage like pickle jar today. Good morning, Miss Gretchen. How are you? Your first live on here. Well, good morning, Miss Jamie. Glad you are here. Welcome. Morning from Missouri, Miss Debbie. Okay, so I'm using a printable today, you guys. Um, and I did not turn my camera around. So it, you'll have to trust me that it's not backwards here. It says pumpkin preserve, and we're going to grunge it up and repurpose this jar to make it look like um, a pumpkin preserves jar. Now, the good thing about this is you could do, double side it, make it reversible. If you want one side fall themed, you could do the other one for something more every day. Uh, could make it, um, I don't know what something could be every day. Um, apple butter, I don't know, apple butter's kind of fall too, but uh, <clears throat> You get the idea. Sorry, I had a frog in my throat. I, I, my allergies are in full force this morning, you guys. My eyes are puffy. I've got like, oh, sinus pressure. So <laughs> if, if I look a little like I just rolled out of the bed, I've been awake for a long time. But it's just these allergies and puffiness have got me like all out of sorts this morning. Good morning, Miss Kathy. Good morning, Miss Sharon. Diane. Oh, that was, I was thought that was a page name. Good morning, Miss Sharon. How are you? Okay, so this printable is free from Etsy. It's a designer on Etsy. If you are interested in this uh, printable, you can reach out to me. Uh, leave a little note down below and I'll be happy to share the link with you. You can find free printables like this online. Um, you'll just want to make sure that they're you know, not copyright protected and they don't get in trouble for anything like that. But this is just an old vintage jar, you guys. And it's quite funny. This jar, I've been hanging on to it for a long time. A long time. <laughs> in fact, way too long that I started a project and never finished it. And in the in this jar, I have sand. I have like beach sand <laughs> from one of our family trips. And um, I was intending on putting some shells and things like that in here. Well, it just never happened. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to take that sand out and I'll re use it for a different project. I'll find another jar, but I want this jar for today's project. Well, I went to try to take the lid off and this lid is like, it's the real thing. It's got the real rust and grunge on it. I didn't have to do anything to it, but it is also 
<laughs> so tight. It's on there sideways. It's so tight. I can't get it off with my morning muscles. <laughs> so I'm going to have to have my husband help me or wait till my muscles wake up a little bit better today or beat and bang on it a little bit to kind of knock it loose, but it is seized up. So we're just going to work with it the way it is. The sand is not going to show by the time we're finished with it today. Good morning, Miss Pat. How are you? Laura and Denise. Thank you all for hopping on. Uh, good morning, Amy. Uh, so we're just going to leave that on for now and work around it. Okay. Um, I have this printable and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my good trusty <laughs> coffee grunge mix. And uh, if you all are familiar with me and my page, I love everything that's rustic, vintage, primitive, that kind of thing. Um, and so I grunge things up. If, they're, if they don't look old, then I make them look old. <laughs> and I know that's not everyone's style, but that's just me. That's just the way I am. So um, if you like today's project, you could probably find tons of other ways that you can do the similar project in your own style. This is just merely to give you some ideas. Good morning, Miss Cheryl. How are you? Uh, so I'm going to first kind of feather tear around the edges of this label. And not that um, the edges are going to show a whole lot, but just in case they do. <laughs> Just in case they do, I want a um, soft edge. I don't want a hard straight edge on this label because everything rustic and vintage to me is worn and tattered, including the edges of a label. <laughs> so um, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna get this wet a little bit with that coffee grunge. That's the secret is that softens that, um, just like a water pen. You could do the same thing with water, you guys. Um, it's just going to soften that paper so that it just tears like a dream. Very soft and feathered at the edges. Let me rip that big piece off and get that out of the way. Um, but I like that soft edge. It makes it just look more worn. More worn and tattered. So as I was thinking about this project today, it kind of took me back to my childhood days when I could remember my grandparents and uh, family members canning, you know, making preserves and, you know, thinking back about that, the whole reason why they would go through those processes all summer long would be to prepare for the fall and to prepare for the winter. Those long days of not, you know, being able to grow their food so this kind of project to me, I think makes me think about those days as well. But just preserving and canning things for the fall, I think just brings back some warm, some sweet memories of, of those days. All right, so all I'm doing is I'm looking around the front of this and I'm gonna kind of get an idea of where I want it. I think it's sized okay. So what I'm gonna do with it next is I'm actually gonna grunge this up with a little bit of, um, am I or am I not? Let me think. <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna Mod Podge this on my jar first and then grunge it. Because here's the thing. I think if I go straight for the grunge, it's gonna make my paper wrinkle a little bit. So I think I'm gonna put it on my jar first. Good morning, Lori and Judy, how are you? Good morning, Miss Yvonne. Hello, Miss Dini. Oh yes, Miss Debbie from Second Hand Treasures. If you all haven't been following her page, she has been traveling cross country, you guys, literally. She is uh, from Florida and she and uh, her husband, along with another couple of uh, friends of theirs, have been traveling cross country. They've been in Oregon and California. So they, she has been posting some beautiful photos of, and pictures of their, um, of their adventures and I, it's so so pretty of the things that they've been seeing i totally did the opposite of what i said i was going to do <laughs> oh well <laughs> we'll see how this works anyway right <laughs> oh well i got to talking and thinking and like totally forgot um <laughs> forgot what i was doing not that i forgot it just wasn't paying attention was i good morning miss francis from vine and silk Designs, how are you? Happy Saturday to you guys. If you all are watching this live, happy Saturday to you. All right, this is pretty. Now this printout already did have um, a little bit of a vintage look to it. 
but let me show you the before and after. I have another, I have a larger size uh, print here. But here's the before, it's a little brighter. And this just kind of dulled, you know, darkened it a little bit. Um, I, I think I like this one. I like it like the darker color, but you do you, okay? All right, so we need to let this dry a little bit. And we will get that right on our jar. I think also, you know, back to the days when, um, you know, housewives and, and family keepers had to use crocs to store their, uh, their, their saved food. You know, they would store it in those crocs for storage. So like they would use, store it for meats and um, not maybe some jellies and such, but I think mainly meats is what I remember reading is what they would use some of those crocs to store things. Um, but if, if you remember those crocs, you know, sometimes it's hard to find a pretty croc. Um, those stoneware crocs is what I'm talking about. And I have a few, I have one, whoop, whoop, yes, right here. I have a real pretty black one right there. Um, and, and I love those. And so this kind of gives me that same vibe. Um, it's about the same size as one of those, you know, average size crocs. Um, but it's kind of a good mixture between... Uh, a canning jar and a crock. You know that coffee grunge, it didn't wrinkle that too bad at all. So I think we're good. I think we're totally good. Now what I'm gonna do, let me think about this again, <laughs> so that I don't goof up again. Good morning, Miss Sherry and Shayna, how are you? So excited y'all are here this morning. It is early for a Saturday morning, I'm not gonna lie. And I am struggling with allergies this morning like crazy, you guys. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I want this uh, label and I'm going to put a little bit of Mod Podge and yes my brush does have a little bit of that coffee grunge mix still on it. That's okay. You can get away with a lot of stuff when it comes to vintage rustic style projects. Okay so my jar it does have hmm, it does have like some seams on the glass you know what I mean. So I want those seams the best that I can. Let me scoot it this way. The seams are like straight down these sides. So I kind of want to center my label the best that I can in between those seams. So let me kind of turn it around and eyeball it here. And then uh, we'll see if we can get this on sort of straight. <laughs> sort of straight. Um, oh, that's gonna work out perfect. I think it's all right, this whole sideways lid at the top is really throwing me off. <laughs> and if you if you missed the beginning of this um, video, then you probably missed me saying that this was a project that I started and did not finish. And so that's why you see a little bit of sand in the bottom of this jar. <laughs> because I had set this up, was going to make this a real pretty little um, beach collection jar. Well, it has sit for years long time and um, without me finishing it. And I thought, you know what? This jar is what I wanna use for today's project, so I don't care. <laughs> I'm gonna take the sand out. Well, the sand, was, that would've been fine. I was gonna store the sand, save it for another project, right? I couldn't get the lid off, you guys. It has sit and this, this lid is so like truly rusty and grungy <laughs> that it has seized up and I cannot get it off. So my morning muscles, I couldn't get it and my husband's not here to help me right now. So I was like, I'm just gonna have to wait until he's here to help <laughs> finish that off. All right, so I think that's pretty. Now, I don't wanna grab the Mod Podge, but look how that, that label fits that jar perfect. And I like the way that this rusty color even matches some of the color on the label. Now that was totally not planned, but it works. <laughs> it works beautifully. I'm going to give this a little bit of a dry and I, you know, I could heat that lid. We'll see if that works. We'll see if that works here in just a second. I was going to get a little rubber mallet and kind of just tap around the edges, but of course everyone around my house in here is still sleeping except for my husband. Um, but I thought I'll wake everybody up <laughs> or I'll break the jar <laughs> right before I go live. <laughs> so I was like, I better just play it safe. Just leave the sand in there. Can I always get the sand out later? <laughs> Good morning. Um, 
looks like I'm storing. Yeah, it kind of does like the way the shadow might move through here, except for we're going to cover this up. So the sand really won't show, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, this is drying pretty fast because we didn't really put a very heavy uh, coat of this on there, just enough to get it attached to that jar. And I love the color of that label. I'm like, I'm like getting to be like a vintage label junkie lately. <laughs> I have used these in so many projects lately and I love it. I love them because this right here is pretty enough. I mean, if I didn't have the sand in it, you know, I could uh, almost display it as it is just with a little bit of extra around the, the rim, but we're going to, we're going to keep going. <laughs> we're going to keep growing. All right. So now here's what we're going to do here. And I totally did not come to the table prepared because I would have grabbed my um, wax paper or parchment paper to spread out here. But now here are my thoughts. For this jar, one thought I had, now you guys are probably going to think I've totally lost my noodles here, marbles, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> Um, but I had thought <clears throat> about decoupaging this jar with a paper bag and grunging this up to give it sort of like that paper bag look. Now this is really light the way it is and I don't think I'm going to do that. I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go grubby. I'm, I think I'm going to go grubby. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this as my spill sheet here. And we're going grubby. Now, if you've never seen me do anything grubby, you're going to think I've, <laughs> I've really lost my mind. <laughs> but I think what this grubby texture will do is it'll give us the actual look of a vintage crock. Good morning, Miss Maureen. How are you? Carolyn is watching as well. Happy to have you guys. So to go grubby, you need instant coffee grains and cinnamon and Mod Podge. That's all you need. Uh, the coffee grunge, yes, it's, it's pinned at the top of my Facebook page, My Sweet Home Living. Uh, I can tell you real quick if you want to know what it is. It is a cup of hot water. Um, hold on here. A cup of hot water, a half a cup of instant coffee, two tablespoons of t cinnamon, and two tablespoons of vanilla. All right, so I have poured some Mod Podge onto my paper plate here. I'm sprinkling a little bit of my instant coffee in this mixture because it's going to kind of give it a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, good grungy color. Now we know that Mod Podge dries clear, but that's not really going to be our, our focus uh, because we're going to cover, we're using this Mod Podge as a, a, a way to grab the instant coffee and cinnamon and when it dries, it's going to give you this hardened glaze look. Let me show you. I have one back here. Um, we did these little grubby jar lights uh, a couple weeks ago, but it gives you, it makes it look like stoneware because it gives you that good grungy, um, polished, like it, it looks like actual stoneware, which is so cool, but it has that grubby texture to it. And that's because of the instant coffee. The instant coffee is your trick to getting that grubbiness so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go all the way around and i'm not going to do my whole jar today guys i'm just going to do the front half and then you guys will get the total idea of what we're doing here and you can um do this same thing um you know to the whole jar when you do yours and i'll finish the back of my jar later probably what i'll do is i'll go ahead and print another label for the back side that i can use all year long and when i do the back half i'll i'll just recreate it just like i've done the front here um so that way i have a reversible piece of decor that i can use all year long you guys all year long now i will tell you that these large jars they're hard to come by unless you like specifically buy pickles in big size oversized jars, which probably not many of us do, <laughs> but you can get a cheap off brand for like 
three or four bucks a jar. That's to me. That's worth the price of the jar. You could rust up um, the lid, and you you know have a repurposed sort of like vintage inspired uh, jars. What I'm trying to say there. All right. So I've got this front half covered. Now what I'm going to do? Set this aside. I'm going to sprinkle some of these cough, instant coffee gr grounds. What are they? I keep wanting to say grounds. They're not grounds. It's just instant coffee grains, I guess. Instant coffee uh, crumbles. I don't know. I'm calling them crumbles. <laughs> um, and I'm just sprinkling it over that Mod Podge. You want your Mod Podge mixture to be on pretty thick, okay? Because that moisture, if you have not watched me do something like this before, this mixture of the Mod Podge and the instant coffee is going to, they're going to marry together <laughs> into something beautiful. Like that grunge mixture that I just showed you on that little grubby jar, that's what happens to that instant coffee. It just starts to melt into that Mod Podge so perfectly, you guys, and it will give you that glazed stoneware look that we love with primitive and vintage style decorating, you guys. All right, so I'm just sprinkling a little bit more. I'm trying to get everywhere covered where I have my Mod Podge at least. Now, if some falls off, that's okay, but you know, just catch it in something like, you know, a piece of parchment paper. You may even use a big, large um, cookie sheet to catch it just so that you can reuse those uh, instant coffee grains because I, I use this stuff in so many things. I use it in my coffee grunge mix and then we're using it like this as well. I use it in my Mod Podge. Sometimes I even mix this with some of my acrylic paint to kind of give it more of a grungy primitive look. Okay, now I still have, it looks a little rough right now, right? I still have some openings where I see a little bit of my Mod Podge. So what I'm gonna do, this cinnamon hasn't even been opened yet. I grabbed the wrong one. I'm gonna take my cinnamon and I'm gonna sprinkle it and it's gonna fall beautifully into those little open areas that didn't get covered by the coffee, okay? We have almost 300 watchers today. I'm so excited you all are here. Thank you all so much for showing up so bright and early on a Saturday morning. Y'all are so awesome. Goodness, there we go. Okay, now we're just gonna sprinkle this, ooh, -hoo, or dump it, <laughs> um, onto some of those light covered areas. All right. And this is gonna kind of help with a little bit of variation in the color, which also, the glaze on stoneware, if you looked at vintage Crocs and stoneware, there's no two pieces that are exactly the same because that's just the nature of the glazes that they used. Um, so yeah, you don't, you know, this is gonna look so much like the real thing <laughs> without spending a whole lot of money on, you know, a vintage uh, crock or piece of stoneware. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking my Mod Podge that I've mixed a little bit of instant coffee in and I'm gonna go back over and I'm just gonna kind of dabble dab whatever you want to call it pounce real lightly on top of this what's here and that's going to provide a little bit more moisture to activate some of that instant coffee that maybe hasn't already started to kind of melt in okay and you see i'm kind of using the side of my paintbrush i'm not i'm not brushing i'm actually dabbing and that's going to that's gonna leave some of that Mod Podge on there and it's gonna help um, soak into that coffee and cinnamon. Now, I, you see that I am totally avoiding my label here because I don't wanna go over my label because it will not be see-through, <laughs> see-throughable. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to see through it. Uh, so whatever this covers, it covers. You know, it completely covers it. Uh, you could, like I did, you can make this an oversized grubby jar light. With these, I put a little strand of um, 
LED lights in and light it up and it's a little grubby jar light. And I tuck it in some little vignettes and little dobos and things like that. But now this could be a true centerpiece and you could decorate around it because it's an oversized jar. You could do the same thing. Put a good size string of lights in it and it will give this part like an amber glow. If you all are familiar with like amber bottles, amber colored bottles, those are highly collectibles um, and they're really popular in home decor right now. Uh, whether it's vintage, modern farmhouse, I mean, it, those amber colored bottles are popular all across different styles of decor right now. And this, if you put a light inside of it, like a string of, of twinkle lights, um, it will give you that amber colored glow. Uh, you won't be able to see through it, but it will, it will give you the glow. Good morning, Miss uh, Susan, how are you? Good morning, Karen. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's just something different. Um, and it's, it's unique. It's not something that you see every day. Um, and you can take something that you have. We all have old jars that we can use. Um, and jars are so easy to come by, right? Of all shapes and sizes. And all you need to do is have some instant coffee <laughs> and glue of some sort mixture like Mod Podge. Um, and cinnamon, we all, those things are all very easy, ex easily accessible. Uh, good morning, Miss Cindy. How are you? Thank you, Miss Shelley. Glad you're loving it. Now, the Mod Podge is, is still a little, you know, it's, it's not clear yet. It's not drying clear yet. Uh, we still have a little bit of drying time, but you will see as it dries. Um, let me hold this up. You can see that the Mod Podge is still really wet right here. Now I'm not going to do the whole back side of my jar right now just for time purposes. I want you to guys get the, the, the process down and know what it's going to look like but not take all of your time today. <laughs> um, so I'll do the back side with a different label and um, that way I can have sort of like two pieces in one. For the fall I'll use my pumpkin preserves side and then for the back I'll have something else. Um, I'll have to look through my label collection. I've got tons of different printables. Um, I'll just have to find the one that kind of speaks to me. <laughs> but this one, uh, this is this is apple butter. If you look real close, that one says apple butter, and we grunged, grubbied up that one, and it gives you that glazed stoneware look. Uh, so we'll finish it off at the top here. Let me get this top as dry as we can. Now I will tell you, if you put this mixture on pretty thick. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to slide, okay? So you might kind of have to babysit it a little bit as it dries because that mixture is kind of thick. So it could, like if you set it up right, the mixture could start to slide <laughs> down the surface of your jar. So just fair warning, if it starts to look like that, which I'm starting to see a little bit up here at the top, I'm going to kind of tilt my jar back the other way so that it kind of just fixes it and stops the slide. <laughs> You're going to prevent the slide, and by putting this heat on it, it will kind of help speed along the drying process as well. Um, you won't probably see this completely get cured and dried until like a day, you know, deep down in there. Now, it'll be dry to where you can just tap on it, um, but not physically actually like grab it and put weight on it. Good morning, Orlea. How are you? Thank you so much for being here this morning. I appreciate you guys. Um, so what I'm seeing on this right now is still the residue of the Mod Podge that's not dry. When it dries, it will have this dark glazed look, okay, without the Mod Podge. My lighting is really kind of bouncing off of it because I have really bright lights uh, for video purposes, but um, it gives you just that real pretty grubby stoneware look, you guys. And you know what? I've heated that lid up. But it's still not going to budge. <laughs> it's still not budging, you guys. <laughs> okay. I want to make sure that I get this top little corner a little bit more dry because I want to show you how I'm going to finish this off at the top. I'm, of course, going to use cheesecloth. <laughs> that has my, been my favorite. And I grunged this cheesecloth with the same coffee mixture, you guys. Now, I'm getting a little bit low in this jar, but I used that same coffee grunge mix to coffee stain my cheesecloth and it smells amazing um, and I use this mixture on tons of different things I've the last month I've been using that almost on every project you guys 
um, on a lot of my fake bakes I made a faux pumpkin pie used this as well I mixed this in with my acrylic paints to get the grungy color we made some faux biscuits these faux pancakes back here I used this coffee grinch mix on I'm telling you guys you can use it for all sorts of things it's amazing boy I really put this Mod Podge thick <laughs> I put it really thick up here at the top I should should have thought ahead and thought Ugh. put the brakes on a little bit when it comes to that but that's okay we're gonna move on because I don't want to take any more time drying so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take where'd my scissors go they're hiding under this paper <laughs> good morning miss Rita um yeah I don't know I think I just need some I think I need my husband to kind of <laughs> pry it off there <laughs> It's not going to budge. I've tried all morning long, you guys. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. So we're just going to work with it for now. So what I'm going to put on the top, you can take off, you know, later. It's not anything permanent. Um, I have a good size piece of cheesecloth here. And what I'm going to do, let me kind of scoot this. Let me move some things here so we can get a better view. <laughs> better view here. All right. You will want to leave this sitting on some uh, something <laughs> to protect your surface because, like I said, it will kind of slide and seep down a little bit um, as it dries. So just fair warning, keep it on something until it's permanently dry that it's not going to ruin, okay? All right, so let's take a good piece of this cheesecloth and let's just cut it. All right, and we are going to drape it over this lid. Uh, and I'm going to kind of probably double layer it, honestly, because I'm going to be very careful here because I know, okay, it, it's, it's okay to touch. <laughs> I can't put any pressure on it because it will stick. I will mess it up. Don't want to do that. Now, this little jar is pretty nifty in the fact that it has this cute little handle, <laughs> but I do have to kind of work around that when I'm putting my top on here didn't think about that part um, so I'm just gonna snip my cheesecloth a little bit there we go right there and then I'm gonna just kind of double this up because my cheesecloth is a little thin um, so you'll just double it double it triple it until you get the look you want you're just draping it you're giving that drapey look come on it wants to kind of roll up on you too. Just kind of work with it, pull it apart. And I love it when it kind of stretches out and gets looking all ravelly at the ends. I love that. All right, so I'm just draping it and then I can go through and cut the ends and the tails as I need to after I get the top the way I want it. Okay, I'm looking. Whew, it is wanting to cling to that cheesecloth though, you guys. Have to be careful there. All right, I'm gonna add just another little light layer at the top. Okay, now you've got a couple options here. This is too long in the back. Let me cut some of this off. Um, you've got a couple of options here. You can totally go around it with some twine, okay? Or you could use an, another little wrap of cheesecloth around the top. Just a real thin little cheesecloth tie, which I think is what I'm gonna do. And then we're gonna embellish it off with some Sweet Annie. Do you all know what Sweet Annie is? <laughs> it's this right here, it's this fragrant little herb right here. It smells amazing. If you could think of what, um, a farmhouse would smell like now I'm not saying like farmhouse animals okay <laughs> I'm saying like a farmhouse smell to me other than like breakfast or things like that or food cooking it just has that I can't even explain it you guys I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and I've failed <laughs> it just has a wonderful homey smell to it I can't explain it 
All right, so I did put that cheesecloth on there, but I still feel like it needs a little bit of something, something to kind of break it up a little bit. I could have using, um, could have used a, um, a fabric strip like I did on this little grubby jar. If you see there, I used a little uh, scrap piece of fabric to tie around the top. You could totally do something like that that matches your decor. Um, but I didn't have any of my fabric scraps over here today. All right, I'm gonna tie this down and I'm gonna put a little knot in it and then we're gonna pull out our sweet Annie and see what we get there. Hold on. Now, primitive style decorating is supposed to be sort of simple, homely, rustic, lots of earth tones and um, muted colors, right? So I think that fits the theme well there. So let's tie it in with a little bit of natural sweet Annie. Now I've had lots of you ask me about this sweet Annie and where to find it. And I will tell you, it is hard to find. You can't find it anywhere. I've looked at like the dried floral section at like Hobby Lobby and things like that. I can't find it there. I have to order it from a seller on Amazon. And so I ordered it and it, come, it came, where my English skills are lacking this morning. <laughs> my brain is just not rolling this morning it comes in a bundle like this okay now this is organically grown this variety this seller that i purchased this from on etsy organically grown and i mean it smells like heaven to me i wish you all could smell it it's not something it's not floral it's not something like lavender it's just that good earthy smell I, I wish I had words to explain it to you. All I know is you just have to get some and smell it for yourself. <laughs> and hopefully you love it as much as I do. But it's used in lots of primitive style decorating, okay? Now, since this is a fairly large jar, I'm going to go with a, a good size piece, okay? Now, a little goes a long way. This will be sort of like a little aromatic piece in itself. So wherever you set this, it's gonna have a nice little smell to it. I'm gonna get a little sprig on one side and another little sprig for the other side. So let me find another little sprig I think that'll be good size and we'll snip it and use it for the other side. And it'll create like a little bow around that little knot that we have at the top. Now that might be a little too much. Let's see. That was a little bigger than I thought. We may just get away with one here. We'll see. Actually, let's take some of those little sprigs off and we'll save those for another project. Okay, two little sprigs and I am gonna pinch a little bit off the end so that I have, <coughs> excuse me, so that I have a little bit of a stem there that I, you will see the little stem there that I have on the end. That way I can stick this in the front here. All right, so let's move this big box out of the way. We're gonna finish this off and have enough time. Yes, uh, the, the seller that I purchased the label from is called Chocolate Rabbit. She's one of my favorite designers uh, on Etsy when it comes to vintage style labels. Uh, but if you want the link to the label, just let me know down in those comments and I will be happy to share the information with you. Um, I think all of the labels actually that I've been working with the last month have been from her shop on Etsy. Yes, I love them. They just fit my style perfectly. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the little stem and I will turn this around and show you guys in a minute. I'm taking that little stem and all I'm doing is it just kind of poking it down into that little knot that I made with the cheesecloth and that cheesecloth will hold it right there in place perfectly. All right, let's stick this one in and we'll push them together. Oh, this is so pretty, so pretty. Okay, now here's the front side. <laughs> and I think, well, I think that's beautiful. Now, you know what else we could also do? I have seen some that have like a decorated top. So you could take a small little vintage candle at the top, you could decorate around the top of it and you could have a little candle effect on top. Or put your strand of string lights inside 
<laughs> and light it up like you would like these little mini jar lights that we have done. So let me show you a few other things that we have done with that coffee grunge mix. You all are gonna go, what? These are the same little, um, the designer of these labels. We made this out of a Quaker Oats container. I used um, the same coffee grunge mix to grunge over that printable. Now, you can print them like this. This is how some of them print black and white, or you can print them already kind of grunged a little bit, but this was not kind of my color scheme. I like a little bit more darker tones to it. So that's what I did to this. So this printed with a little bit of a vintage color to it. I just went over it with a little bit of the coffee grunge mix to kind of give it a little bit more of my color effect. But that's, I know my camera's backwards, sorry you guys. But that says Miss Butter's Baking Powder Biscuits and I used to pair that with my little homemade biscuit or faux biscuits that we made a couple weeks ago. Then I used another one of her printable designs, okay, and made a little grain sack out of those printable labels, you guys. You can print on muslin material using just a regular uh, home printer, and that's what I did with those. So I love all of these like vintage style labels and printables are perfect for using around your home, and it doesn't take much at all. Like some of her designs, you can get like four, I think in this little set, this came in a set of four printables actually, and it was like $3 maybe. Um, so that's not bad at all. Like that's less than a dollar a label. And then once you purchase it, you can print it and use it as many times as you want um, for your own purposes. Um, so, you know, think of all of the things that you could use those labels for. The little faux grain sacks, little uh, faux little baking tin containers. What else have we used these on? Um, oh, tags, hang tags. Um, labels like this, like we've done for the grubby jar lights. I mean, you can use them on all kinds of things, you guys. You could even use these on, you know, everybody's, you've seen there for a little while, there was the crushed tin craze. You could use those on some of those crushed tins, or even without crushing them, you could use them on that as well. Um, so think outside of the box. You could really have some fun with some of these printable labels across your home. And they all kind of mix and give you that same little style of, of decor. But I hope you loved today's project as much as I did. I love it. Um, but I think this is so cute. So now all I need to do is to do the back side <laughs> with another style label that's not so fall. And then I will have something that looks like a vintage crock, you guys. Is that not cool? You can start to see it's it's um, a lot of the Mod Podge is starting to dry now. It still is a little tacky, a little tacky to touch, um, but you can see that it's giving us that gloss, that glazed stoneware um, look to it. So, and this is a ginormous piece that you can really use. Like it is the size of this crock back here. So if you wanted to, you could create this leave the top open and put some fall florals in the top if that is something that would interest you okay lots of different ways that you can use this you could put this on a little pedestal um, and decorate around it you could put it on um, as a centerpiece uh, set it down in the center of a real uh, simple fall wreath uh, like a little ring it would kind of be like a candle ring wreath sort of you would set your jar down in that use it as a centerpiece there Tons of ideas that you could go with this, you guys. I hope that I've inspired you today. Miss Sheila from Sweeties Creations and Decor is coming up next. To find her, head over to the event group that you see linked in my video description above. And I hope that you have a fabulous day and enjoy today's marathon.